Welcome everyone. My name is Derek. I'm with the FreeWave marketing team. Excited for another edition of FreeWave's Tech Talk series. Today, the focus is the importance of network uptime. We got some great panelists, some great experts. My name is John Bonner. If you want to shut your video down, I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Cap Logistics. I'm uh, Joe B. I can turn down the, the microphone. I'm the President and the CTO of Starfire Energy. It's Greg Corey. Better late than never. And I'm the Director of Customer and Technical Support for FreeWave Technologies. First question for you, how would you describe your company, Cap Logistics Uptime Solutions, to the audience out there? Yeah, so we have a 40-year history of working with industries where uptime is critical, uh, whether it's power generation or oil and gas. We, we talked about water and water waste management. Um, so we're thought leaders in uptime logistics. And when we talk about logistics, we're talking about the physical movement of material and data so that people can track where their material's at. And right now we're focused on helping our customers complete their reliability programs. And we are doing this by assisting with safety, recovery, and prosperity. And, you know, right, everybody's aware of the current situation and we're trying to be really sensitive to the needs of our customers and their desire to remain up uh, always. And, and when there are failures, we try to, to come to the aid. And so where does logistics come into play just in an overall network uptime strategy? Yeah, I, I think probably the easiest way for me to describe it for everybody is from to really shorten the interval from time of failure to time of repair. Um, to try to make that window as narrow as possible and as short as possible so that while the network may go down, we want to minimize uh, the time that it's down and really maximize uptime opportunities. Greg, um, as the connected edge becomes even more remote, is 100% network uptime a realistic expectation? Well, there's actually, there's two different ways you can interpret that question. So when we talk about network uptime, we're talking about is the device powered up and is it communicating with the network? FreeWave deals with a lot of very remote operations. So on the power side, um, they may not have reliable power. Uh, it could be on solar or sometimes even wind power. Um, on the wireless side, it's not uncommon to see our systems that have been online and connected wirelessly for two to three years. Um, we do see that uptime uh, in the field, but it, you know, to go back to your question on, you know, is it an impossibility with truly remote applications? Um, uh, sometimes it is just an impossibility that you're not going to have 100% uptime, especially if you have a 30 or 40 mile wireless link um, that's very remote. What's important is that you architect your system to be able to deal with those types of failures of network outages. So if you have critical data that's being recorded uh, at that site, you need to be able to record that and store it on site and then have that data transfer as soon as the wireless link becomes available. So it, you can try your best um, to have, you know, 100% network uptime, but if it's data really that truly cannot be lost, um, you need to have a system that's, you know, built around storing that data in case of those situations where you lose connectivity. So FreeWave products, what's the average uptime, you know, or what, what average uptime is typically observed in the field? So as I mentioned previously there, it's not uncommon to see two to three years of uptime for a FreeWave industrial radio. Um, as long as the system has reliable power and there's enough margin on the wireless link, meaning that it has a, a good signal level and a fairly low noise level, um, yeah, you can achieve years of uptime. Uh, and in terms of the entire product lifespan, uh, in support, um, which I manage for FreeWave, we commonly get calls from customers that have had wireless links installed for 10 to 20 years. Um, that have operated with minimal failures there. So 
you're, uh, you're only as reliable uh, as your power source for your device right. and the strength of that wireless link. I had a question for Greg. Uh, you had mentioned uh, uh, you know, like a, a 30, 40 mile uh, radio transmission and, and you know, reliability there. And I'm curious, what, what's a typical distance for the transmission and what, how far can they go? That's a great question, Joe. Um, so when it comes to distance that you can achieve with free wave radios, uh, very commonly we see up to five miles. Um, we do have applications that are up to, you know, in the 15, 20 mile range. Those are still fairly common. Once you get over 20 miles, it's really dependent upon your antenna height, the lay of the land, if there's any signal path obstructions, um, so there's a lot of variables that go into answering that question, but very commonly we see up to five, five to 15 miles, slightly more uncommon. And then like in the 15, 20 plus range, um, that's something where you have to have a specific type of environment. Um, as I mentioned, antenna height is pretty important. The greater the antenna height, uh, the more clearance you're going to have over the terrain. We primarily deal with 900 megahertz unlicensed systems. So when you're in the US, you are limited to one watt of output power uh, at the radio. So the distances that I just mentioned there are achievable with one watt, um, the right antenna selection, and then obviously lucking out with the signal path that you have. So do you do things like use repeaters to get to longer distances or do you try to get to a wired connection somewhere and then go the rest of the way? Or how does that work out? Yeah, absolutely. You can use repeaters uh, with the majority of our radio products. Um, and it's not you know, uncommon to see repeaters uh, in a radio network. We have customer networks that have no repeaters. We have customer networks that have maybe 15, 20 repeaters, depending on the, uh, the size of the installation there. So that's very common. And it's also common to see free wave networks connected to other types of networking technologies. So sometimes you'll see a cellular modem um, that goes into a free wave gateway radio, and then you jump out over a free wave network for that last mile of connectivity. Uh, sometimes you'll see free wave networks connected to fiber or some other type of you know, physical networking medium. Um, so free wave radios can act as an as an extension of many common different networking topologies you encounter. Question, why do you need radio communications with your ammonia product production equipment? Um, Won't it be using grid power and have phone lines? Well, uh, some of them will and some of them won't. Uh, the, uh, so our proposition is we wanna use wind and solar power to uh, uh, make uh, carbon-free ammonia no CO2 emissions, and that can be used for energy storage and fuel. And that wind and solar power, it turns out that in the U.S., uh, some of the best locations for wind and solar aren't being used yet because they're not on transmission lines. And so that's an opportunity for us to locate in those locations before transmission lines even get there and use it for making uh, the ammonia that we want to sell to our customers. But in addition to not having power transmission lines, they likely have no data connections either. And so for those, we, uh, we definitely need some kind of, of uh, radio communication to keep track of what the plant's doing and to send it instructions. Um, so that, that's the most critical part for us needing, needing the radio transmission. So will your equipment shut down if you lose communications with it? Um, not necessarily, no. Uh, we, um, we're building it to have uh, autonomous operation uh, so that under you know, what you consider normal operating conditions where nothing really strange is going on, then it uh, adjusts its uh, operations to use the available power. Um, when we really need the uh, uptime for remote operations is when things are changing rapidly, when you, you have uh, wind power that's varying rapidly, you know, it could drop down to nothing and then come back up again as a weather system moves through. And then you need to be able to tell the plant, uh, you know, basically, do you need to, sh does, does the plant need to shut down 
but stay warm because the wind's going to be coming back in a matter of half an hour, or does it need to shut down because you're going to be in the doldrums for the next three days? And so those are the kinds of things that in remote operations, we really need to be able to handle. Will your on-grid systems need to talk to the utility company too? Well, yeah. And actually that, that uh, was what I was sort of starting to lead to on the, the uh, uh, load leveling was uh, another customer class we have is utility companies with nuclear power plants that uh, what they're seeing is uh, wind and solar power are getting put on the grid. They're cheaper than the nuclear and they're having to curtail the nuclear power plant to, to allow the, the wind and solar room on the grid. And uh, what they want to do is to run that nuclear plant full out all the time. And so they're looking at us as being a dispatchable demand that can uh, increase or decrease our power requirements as needed to keep that nuclear power plant's output constant all the time. And for that, then we need a, a very robust minute to minute uptime kind of connection to the, the utility. So we know exactly what we need to be doing to, to uh, keep their uh, load leveled out nicely. And so speaking of that, that connection, you know, how, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be with FreeWave, how you partnered with them um, and, and go into that a little bit? Yeah, um, FreeWave actually found us. Uh, they uh, got hold of us uh, after uh, hearing about us on a podcast, I believe, um, and you know saw that we were into kind of remote operations and utility-related operations. And uh, they uh, contacted us and just asked, you know, here's what well said, you know, here's the 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 services we provide, is that something you'd be looking for? And honestly, that was exactly a thing we were looking for. We, we uh, knew, you know, I mean, we're at the prototype stage of development and, but we knew, you know, we're going to need something different than just an internet connection because not every place has those. And so uh, we had this kind of thing in mind, didn't know who to go to and they fortunately found us. And so now we're, uh, getting equipment from them to start testing out to uh, learn how to use it well. Uh, John, did you want to talk about your relationship specifically with FreeWave at all a little bit? You know, how they kind of got started. But I think the relationship with FreeWave was really based on a mutual focus on uptime and just how important it is to businesses and how, I mean, the businesses, the engineers that you're talking to understand uptime and they're designing product and systems to be, you know, up 90 plus, you know, 0.99% of the time. And we do a lot of work with the people that are on the ground that are experiencing that unplanned failure. And we help them go out into their distribution network and identify the suppliers and then you know, bring the part needed for repair in as quickly as possible. And that's, it started out with a mutual interest in uptime and just how important it is and how important it is to, to our entire, you know, growth plan. Well, once again, guys, thank you very much for your time today. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you all for watching out there. Um, and with that, that ends another Freeway Tech Talk series. This one focused on network uptime. Hope to see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.